Suarez did take it over Sinji. Now, I'm definitely going to be ready to see what's going to be happening a lot more. Um, from what I remember, um, what kind of happened was that, like, you know, Suarez had to be very patient when he actually got a lot of those things. Um, or a lot of those like openings that he kind of needed, um, you know. Again, like right, seeing right here, playing with Hydrant, just doing what he kind of needs to do, like when he doesn't have the lead. Just because, like, we already know how Sinji plays. Sinji plays if he's not gonna, you know, like n just play the game. Like he doesn't really want to play the game. He's just like, um, I'm staying in my little corner here. I'm very comfortable where I'm at right now. Look at where we're at right now. We're at a very even game, only 0.1% difference. I think Sinji is extremely comfortable with the way that he's playing right now, if we're going to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for this past 30 seconds, we've seen just Sinji taking the space, and Suarez uh, trying to look for an opening here, but hasn't quite been able to find it, and Sinji is taking full advantage of that. Absolutely. We're kind of just seeing a little bit of this little game here. Now, like, I, I think since, you know, we already know uh, a lot of the people that we have here, we have John Numbers and we have Sinji. We, we might be getting into a little bit of a slow match here. I mean, Suarez is definitely at 50% right now, but what I'm definitely looking for Suarez to do here is to kind of just, like, look for his ways in with um, probably... Um, you know, probably fair, if anything. Just kind of, like, being careful with how, like, they actually space, um, you know, fair on Hydrant. Kind of just, you know, doing what he's been doing. Oh, what he's been doing. Um, just, like, kind of throwing Hydrant, you know, out of the equation. You know, when it comes to, like, this character, Hydrant, Hydrant is, like, the main determining factor, if we're going to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. As in you're talking Hydrant, sort of, uh, creates the wall and how you deal with that is what defines how the character plays the matchup, that sort of deal? Absolutely. Mm, I agree. It's um, definitely a big wall and difficult for a lot of characters to deal with. And even when you get past that wall, we're seeing right here, Suarez is working his way in and then Cindy just doing these out of shield options, tossing a quick brute dash attack through. Um, and it's making it very difficult for Suarez to uh, get the opening he needs to start his offense. Absolutely. Now, kind of just, this is something that, you know, we've seen Suarez do. They'll just wait right next to, you know, Hydrant at higher percents. This is kind of like where Suarez needs to be very careful. They can definitely, um, you know, like kind of poke out a little bit with Egg, but just going to get, you know, stopped right there in that little moment right there. Ooh, okay. So, ooh, very nice fair. Just gonna try and get some edge guarding going. This is kind of what Suarez needs. Gonna go really far and just make it right back into the corner. Gonna go for that up smash. Not gonna get it. Just, ooh, oh, oh god, oh, oh no. Okay, so what really happened there was just honestly a mess. If we're gonna be completely honest, you know, like. That was honestly just super crazy. Yeah, it was uh, a very scary situation for Suarez to be in on that one with uh, Sinji with the bell. Uh, he could have jumped out on that one, maybe done an aerial on the way up, but that was a commitment. Sinji sat there, waited for a commitment, and he got it into the kill confirm. Absolutely, and we're getting these down airs coming on the nice up air. Wow, 63%. This is exactly what, you know, Suarez needed. Now, what we're going to be seeing here is hopefully Suarez trying to find maybe a little bit more of an opening, but now Suarez actually can kind of calm down a little bit. You know, right now, this is where we're actually seeing Sinji being a little bit of the aggressor. Sinji needs to get some of these, like, fares, and fair is definitely, I think it's minus three on shield, if I remember correctly. It's definitely one of those things that Sinji is definitely able to throw out a lot more of the time than, you know, they actually won. And just going to get that grab, going to put on 53%, but... You know, this is this is where Suarez wants to be. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Sinji being the aggressor here. It's that Pac-Man's options on the aggressive aren't actually that bad. We saw that spaced forward smash. We've seen the out of shield options, of course, the Nair and the Fair. Um, and it can be difficult for Suarez to find that right spacing where he can start his offense but not open himself up to getting clipped by Sinji and potentially uh, turning this lead into a deficit. Absolutely, and honestly, you know, this this just looks like super comfortable for, you know, Suarez right here. And the thing about, you know, Pac-Man and their aggression is honestly that, you know, it looks like, you know, oh, very nice down B, by the way, from Suarez. Gonna take that sock. But the thing with, you know, um, you know Pac-Man, it's just that, like, they may have a nice safe air, but it's just like, as a character, they're almost similar to Mario. You know, they don't actually have too much to kind of, you know, Hit, you know, hit anybody for. So if you're kind of just circle camping, if you're not like, you know, doing the most when you're actually next to Pac-Man and you have the lead, that's honestly one of your best things to, you know, kind of approach this matchup with. Okay, um, so Suarez is just looking like very, you know, good. I remember that, you know, they definitely, 
can bring back that patience that they need to. This is kind of what we're seeing right here, just a little bit more of that patience, just making sure that they can build up as much of a lead as possible, but gonna nair on Shinji's shield. Shinji's just gonna throw that bell I mean, right away and just immediately take that stock, but we're still at a 61% you know, deficit for Shinji. And I'm gonna be honest, it's looking like, you know, Suarez wants to lose that, you know, lead that they had immediately. I mean, gonna not be in disadvantage for too long, but 24% right now. They definitely need to continue playing the way that they've definitely been playing, you know, this whole time. Gonna get that fair. Nair and they're back off stage against... Oh. Mm -hmm. That was a really smart call to use the invincibility from the grab to uh, avoid the egg on that one. Absolutely, and right now this is getting pretty even, you know, Suarez's lead was looking very nice. Gonna get that balance of up smash, not gonna take it just yet, and it's we're seeing this is exactly where Shinji kind of wants to be. They may be not too in too good of a lead right now, but oh, very nice. Gonna take that down, be reading that roll from ledge. That was absolutely so amazing from Suarez. They kind of just, you know, they played the way they were supposed to play. This is exactly what we saw from Suarez. I think they played at Encore, and that's exactly where Suarez beat Sinji. And I'm gonna be honest, it was, it was looking a little bit scary, but, you know, they definitely took that game for sure. It was, um, I think it was a really good showing of Sinji's ability to play. Because you can say Sinji plays passive and there was a lot of moving back, you know, charging fruits, uh, establishing space and his win condition from a distance. But we also saw a lot of, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, a passive aggression. We would see Sinji walk up with Bell, wait for an option. And we saw two times the roll away and the Nair out of shield were both punished by the Bell into a kill. So it's very scary to be in one of those disadvantageous positions as Yoshi when Pac-Man is charging up Bell. Mm, absolutely. And I definitely like this stage choice from Sinji, they definitely want to remove any, you know, movement um, capabilities that, you know, Suarez might actually have to their advantage and just ver severely limit Suarez's, you know, ability to actually land safely so that, you know, when we see Suarez might be in a lead, you know, Sinji can just immediately take that back because where, where Suarez is going to go, you know? Like, we're on FD right now, like, there's absolutely no platforms, as we already know. This is, can be, this can be very, you know, volatile for Sinji. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. We're seeing also with the Hydrant pushing Suarez off stage right there, um, there's not any set verticality that you can hang on. You've either got to jump or sit yourself back down on the ground. And Yoshi with only the double jump, which is a very important defensive option for him, um, it can be very difficult to get around Pac-Man's zoning without committing that defensive option and opening yourself up to potentially an early stock. Absolutely. And the kind of thing that I also really love about Suarez, or just not, not Suarez in specific, but, you know, Suarez has definitely been using all the tools that, you know, he deems, you know, necessary in order to actually play this matchup. But the thing is that Yoshi has such a good tool in order to actually interact with Hydrant. However, it's not going to matter because Suarez is going to get hit by that bell and just going to die, you know, leaving, you know, Sinji at this very perfect stage, you know, just more of the time for, you know, him to just build up a lot of damage already 14 percent i mean this can definitely look a little bit scary mm -hmm. and we're seeing um like you said before Sinji going a little bit on the aggressive here and a lot of safe options that Neron shield just going for spaced out options here to try to get little bits and pieces of percent that forward tilt run away dash attack in try to go for a safe escape option and it all adds up on this extra stock that Sinji has absolutely and what we're kind of seeing a little bit right now is that definitely like Suarez has definitely been, you know, succumbing to a lot of DFD, you know, faults that, you know, is just kind of consistent with FD and people who kind of struggle with landing. We've seen Sinji catch a lot of Suarez's landings with Bell, with just a lot of things. And right now, what we're seeing right here is just Sinji completely almost going to be lapping Suarez in about 45%. We can definitely see, you know, Suarez is struggling a little bit on this stage. Um, absolutely for sure. Now, the actual stages that, you know, we s had seen, um, you know, Suarez actually banned was PS2, or not PS2, sorry, um, Town and, you know, um, Kalos right there. Um, so, this is probably just one of the things that I feel like Sinji might have, I mean, not Sinji, um, Suarez might have to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, ooh. That's an interesting little call tossing the Galaxian into ledge there. I don't know if that was supposed to be over ledge or if that was supposed to catch anything that might come off as uh, an edge guard or a ledge trap from Yoshi. 
Absolutely. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. It definitely worked in their favor because right now we have Suarez at 76%. I mean, ooh, that definitely could have been a very bad time for Sinji. But, you know, Sinji's only at 34%. They don't really have to worry about much. You know, they have Bell in hand. And this is going to be what kind of actually determines, you know, how this match kind of ends up, you know. It's kind of looking like, you know, whenever Suarez is kind of, you know, in a very bad spot, they kind of just do a little bit too much and it looks like they might be just getting a little bit upset just because it's just like you know they're doing a lot of things and all those you know yoshi's nair is really good with yoshi and the yoshi's um magenta tims um <laughs> you know it just it just needs to be a little bit more like they're kind of cognizant of how they actually kind of interact with you know sinji whenever they are you know in a disadvantageous position and just trying to get that kill mm -hmm. and then we saw a lot of that uh matchup cognizance as well back there trying to play around that bell got clipped with it twice in the first game um being very careful you saw the air dodge up to potentially catch it we saw the roll aways all that to try to avoid the bell kill confirmed that was a very nice roll from sinji and gonna get that bell into f smash killing that was a really nice, you know, kind of game coming in from Sinji. Suarez does not look too happy about that game. I'm going to be completely honest. They were doing super well that first game, but they just let, you know, Sinji take them to FD. And it looks like, speaking of FD, we're not going to go to FD again. We're going to go to Sma Small Battlefield. I was going to say Smashville. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, the thing with this stage is that I honestly... I. I always support Small Battlefield. Small Battlefield is such a good stage, especially like when you need to play against zoners. You know, that's kind of the thing that I feel like Suarez is definitely looking for here. He wants a small stage, but a stage with platforms that's gonna help him bring more, you know, defensive options to the table, you know, that he can actually use. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting as well to see how Sinji's uh, projectile play will be influenced by having these two platforms here that could potentially add this level of verticality that we didn't see in the previous game in FD. Absolutely, and already we're kind of seeing, you know, most of it, mostly an even game, you know, it definitely already can tell, you know, what Sinji is kind of looking for. They're definitely looking for, you know, Suarez to just be very unsafe when it comes to just, you know, in his general bubble of, you know, like threat range and whatnot from Sinji. And I definitely love the way that Sinji is kind of just like not really showing that he actually kind of cares about, you know, like Yoshi and their eggs. You know, I'm um, using a lot of, um, a Galactica to actually kind of just go through the egg since it does go in a little bit of a circle before it actually gets to the egg and just making it we're already at 114 percent you know just making it so hard for Suarez to actually do anything mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of options here where Suarez is trying to go in on the offensive um, not necessarily hard committing to an option but walking into Sinji's mix you saw stuff like tossing the bell to cover high and then Sinji covers a little bit on another side so Suarez's options are reduced every time he tries to get in on this character absolutely and we're not going to see the kill just entirely yet however we're just seeing you know Sinji just absolutely take advantage of all the times that Suarez just wants to immediately rush in like you know what's gonna happen right there with the apple into death that was at like almost 200 percent if I remember correctly you know like I definitely think even though you know Suarez might have been at that percent this is that's definitely you know the time to actually kind of just be like okay you know I may be at this higher percent but we saw you know Sinji wasn't even able to kill him until like 180%. That's exactly where you need that patience, that, you know, kind of just like uh, ability to kind of just wait right, you know, in his range mm -hmm. and not really, you know, just make a hard commitment just yet. You know, we've seen him do that. He has the capabilities to do that. It's just he's being very, you know, um, just very bold with a lot of his options that don't really work out too much. Not going to die to that, but uh, Smash again, reading that tech, I mean... We definitely need to see more of this patience because, you know, Sinji's, again, like the second game we saw, almost lapping Suarez in percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is definitely looking extremely scary for Suarez. Yep. Very nice going to get that, but... Yeah, it's... It's only in that uh, recovery there that we saw Suarez able to take advantage. Um, but most of the time, Sinji creates these situations where at most he's going to take a little bit of damage. And he is fully content to just come away from an interaction with a couple percent because that's a small win. And that continues to rack up as we saw in that previous stock where Suarez was just trying to find a kill. And Sinji was not having that vulnerability in his play to make it happen.
Absolutely. And we're kind of just seeing, you know, Suarez is kind of trying to put push their advantage a little bit more. You know, they were being a little bit careful about how they actually went about their advantage. They saw that, you know, Sinji was not, you know, like, was able to kind of just react. So they kind of just waited. But that kind of, like, let them lose a lot of the advantage that they kind of would have had. Um, definitely just looking at this game already, this can definitely be a repeat of game two. You know, we need to definitely need to see Suarez just, you know, take a little bit more of their time, just kind of find where, you know, Sinji's disadvantage is at his weakness, you know. And since we are, like, you know, talking about zoners like Pac-Man, zoners, as much as, you know, they might have really good options, they definitely still have a really bad disadvantage when you get them. And being able to find that way is definitely what we kind of need here. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to find that spot because uh, oftentimes when Sinji might be uh, recovering or... Oh, that was a good coverage. Um, when Sinji's recovering is one of the few times where Suarez can really get in, but oftentimes there's a bonus fruit or a hydrant in the way or both. Um, and it can be difficult to try to get the avenue of attack that you want without getting caught up, slowed down, or potentially even counterattacked yourself. Absolutely. And, you know... Just honestly speaking about this game altogether, like, Sinji has definitely, you know, kind of realized a lot of the things that, you know, Suarez has been faulty for. Honestly, we're just going to see that in there into up smash. And, you know, you might have thought that that was a best of three. However, we're in best of five territory. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need to see here is definitely where, you know, we see a little bit of a different scene from, you know, um from Suarez we need to see a little bit more of that patience that he had that first game and although they might not have been happy with how the last two games went this is probably the choice to kind of see you know hey okay so you know let me just wait here and then when I get my next advantage not you know my next you know um, semblance of advantage right here is where I'm definitely going to be blowing you know Sinji up for a lot of things that they did and they actually really did you know not really it wasn't really that much you know they got that um egg into nair like very far off stage but they still definitely got that kill and that's definitely something that they could be looking for when it comes to you know Sinji and their recovery um definitely for sure um just getting into this game already we kind of have a little bit of like you know even percents here just as you know any normal game starts you know we're kind of just hoping that we can probably find you know you know, Sinji just trying to play a little bit more defensive, you know, has the lead. This is definitely where, you know, Sinji kind of wants to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, we're seeing uh, a little bit of the same uh, aggression defense patterns from Sinji here. A lot of stuff like early on in the game, we saw Suarez try to go in, pushed off with the water of the Hydrant. If that had been closer, that would have been a uh, hitbox uh, dragged on the Hydrant. That could have been jumped into an aerial. There's all these defensive options as Sinji moves away and builds up his win condition that it's very difficult to play passive and let him have more access to kill confirms off a bell, to key across the stage. But if you play too quickly, then you jump right into him. He hits you for a bit of damage, resets across the other side of the stage, and you get to do it again. Absolutely. And this is definitely... That was very nice. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm very... Making very good, like, no, or making note of, you know, when people are actually very patient. But we've seen that Suarez was kind of just, like, laughing about it. He's kind of laughing about it right now. He knows that, like, he needs to be very careful. Like, he needs to be this type of patient. You know, you're playing against Sinji, one of the best Pac-Mans in the world, alongside, like, Tay. Um, or T, sorry. Um, we, this is definitely like what he's gonna try and at least maybe hype himself back up so that they can actually, you know, make this comeback. It's definitely within the realm of possibilities. We saw at this recent Xeno, you know, they definitely had a lot of good, you know, semblance of advantage when they did play against Till. So this is exactly what they need. They need to calm down a little bit and just like really blow up Sinji for whatever, you know, disadvantageous positions that Sinji has been having. But gonna lose that back air and this is a little bit where we're starting to see you know just a little bit of a breakdown i mean you know it's a, it's a little bit sad at this point because like well honestly i still feel like this could be done on suarez's end it's very difficult and uh with the time that's currently left um you can see i think uh, with that drift down a little bit of like mental drain we saw suarez taking a breather full stage because it is exhausting to try to get in uh dying a death of a thousand cuts um, and putting yourself in these mixes to try to start your offense. But I do think Suarez could manage to pull it back with Yoshi's explosive offense. But Absolutely. It, it'll take, like, a real solid a hunkering down of uh, mental state to get it done. 
Absolutely. And just that's kind of like what's, you know, you hear, you know, as much as we haven't seen Yoshi make a comeback, you know, Yoshi can do some things. I, I wouldn't put it past, you know, Suarez to put a little bit of cheese in, you know. But honestly, oh, oh. Still active. Holy moly. That's so crazy. Well, we did see just a little bit of, you know, Pac-Man things. Pac-Man things. And speaking of Pac-Man things already, um, I kind of have to make note of um, this video. I don't remember who the video was by. I'm not really a part of, you know, YouTube and, um, you know, mm -hmm. just like a lot of the YouTube content creators that we do have. But they were actually breaking down a lot of the zoner type characters. And the kind of thing with zoners is that as much as we see, you know, a lot of them just building a wall and not letting people come in. It, it kind of like helped break down a lot of, you know, the things that are actually ro really wrong with zoner characters, you know, just being able to have, you know, a lot of these fast tools. But from what we saw in this game, you know, it's like Sentry is just making very good use of those tools. I mean, as much as like you want to say like Pac-Man is just a cheesy character, mm -hmm. I honestly truly believe that, you know, whenever you do get to like a lot of these better players with, you know, Pac-Man, it's just like... At that point, it's just like you have to like really, really, really outplay, you know, Sinji in order to actually like win. And then once you kind of get like down of what you have to do against Sinji, I think any Pac-Man, you know, that are just like around, you know, here and there is going to be, you know, like a walk in the park, mm -hmm. you know. And it's there's definitely some uh, matchup experience that I think is very vital to that because there's a lot of moving parts at any given time in a Pac-Man matchup. Um, but then there is also the uh, play style that Sinji has, where he will absolutely take you for 6%, reset across the ledge, he creates a safe zone for himself. Um, and you have to know the Pac-Man matchup as a base, as a foundation to understand, okay, these are what all these tools do, do. this is when it's a good time to go for them, this is what Pac-Man wants in general. Then Sinji has mix-ups that are built on that foundation of, okay, I know what